pastel coloured tower block, the nasty edge of town, interrupts the sunrise with a 15 storey frown, the paint jobs look like piss stains, the grass is pasty brown, the council dropped a bollock, but they'll never pull it down. Franco is a failure by the age of 23, he used to be a rock star, now he works in HMV. To Kimberly is a pity shag with little else to choose. A recovering alcoholic, she works in bargain booze. They sell a tape of broken sign to the elevator door. Step inside and fornicate as it moves between the floors. For Franco it's a mission, sex is now a sport. For Kimberly it's all about the risk of being caught. They silently pretend that they get any pleasure from it. And then they roll a spliff to make the other person vomit. Netflix as a sedative, till eyelids win the jewel, a tumbleweed existence as boring as it's cruel. No one said the twenties would be destitute and bleak, formulating saving plans to see them through the week, with the papers in the Rizzler pack that say you're nearly done. Kimberly made a collage that said, I haven't yet begun. The strip lights are flickering, the toddlers wear designers, graffiti on the wall that says, victory to the miners. Destruction to procrastinate, convenience is queen, unhinged, uninhibited, unheard and unseen. My name is Matt Abbott, welcome to this week's Insta Session. I am joined tonight by Chris Redmond. Chris is a poet, musician, producer extraordinaire. Um, he works with Tung Fu, which is a fantastic live spoken word poetry music mashup that has performed all around the world. Um, and they're about to release an album, which we will hear more about. So I shall ask Chris poems and some chat. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Chris has to offer in his word bank. Here we go. How are you doing? Hey, hello, man. Yeah, great. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, good to see you. Likewise, sir. Likewise. I'm just going to turn my volume up. There we go. Yeah, so... Um, Pretty exciting time for you at the moment, all hands on deck, getting things ready for the, the album release on the 27th of November. Yeah, that's How are you right. Feeling? Uh, I'm feeling exhausted, um, <laughs> but in a good way. Uh, yeah, it's great, man. It's been a very long project um, that has sort of ambled its way through the last three years, not constantly, but, you know, just chipping away at it. So it's really satisfying to kind of be at a point where we're almost ready to release it into the wild. Yeah, and let it do its thing. Yeah. Well, I don't think anything else could possibly happen to derail it any more than it already has done. Nah. So I think you're all right. Don't speak too soon. I mean, there's, you know, there's always, there's always something extra. It's still only October, man. We've got two months of, you know, 2020, like anything can happen. But yeah, hopefully. That's true. Yeah. If yeah. you put Matt Hancock in charge of the internet, we might be fucked, but <laughs> hopefully that's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's focus on the positives. Uh, obviously, the new track came out on Friday. Uh, it's a stunning track for anyone who's not seen it. Uh, incredible video as well. Um, what, what would you say has been, uh, this might be really difficult, but what would you say has been the highlight of the process so far? Would it be listening to it for the first time, or was there a particular song? Or uh, It's really hard to say. I mean, I think so the process basically just to, to encapsulate it was a series of workshops with uh, a bunch of us in a room together so uh, that was really interesting getting uh, you know a group of poets like we tend to work quite a lot in isolation as writers don't we we sit quite yeah. and scri scribble away so to get like Anthony Alex Agro and Joshua Edehan and Amira Leon and Vanessa Kasule and Disraeli and all these wonders, wonders of the spoken word world all in one room was quite wow. a force. It was quite a force. And so um, to then, you know, watch, I don't think I could say one particular moment, but it was very satisfying to watch these ideas kind of coalesce and start to really take shape and then take that into a studio and, and sort of see see a thing being being made out of what began in conversation and now we've got a record so yeah when i listened to it the other day for the first time and i got the masters back i had a bit of a cry because i was like this is really good and yeah what, what a thing but even just even just the image of those poets in a room together creating something and collaborating on something if that doesn't make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up then yeah. i don't know what it will. <laughs> but even feels... just the fact that yeah yeah, it still does. It still does me. I'm very, very, very grateful that they're all up for it. Um, so, yeah, I, I just want people to hear it now. It's like, <laughs> holding on to it. Yeah. It's all good. This is the best bit. 
this is yeah. that, just that anticipation of that nervousness and yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So um, your debut collection was published by Burning Eye in 2016. Let the pig mm. out. Is that that's right? right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so how do you sort of divide your time between Tong Fu and Chris Redmond, poet? Because that must be quite, a, or do they work hand in hand or is it quite difficult to compartmentalise? Uh, yeah, I mean, I could ask you the same question, Matt, being a, a yeah. man of a man of many hats. Uh, I think too many. Works, yeah, too many. I think that's the case a lot of the time, isn't it? Because we all, you know, all the best poetry nights are run by poets. And then that, you know, look at what Anthony's done with Outspoken. And that then becomes a press. And, you know, he's then publishing books. And it's like everyone's covering several bases. So I think it works for me sporadically you know like there are times when it feels like balance and other times it feels like i'm giving all my energy to to one thing and not another um and before coronavirus obviously there was sort of more opportunity for balance in other works i do bits of work in theater as well and yeah right now it's a bit you know it's, i'm a one trick pony and that's kind of all right actually it's sort of needed for now but um i'm sort of looking forward to just downing Tung Fu tools for a little while at yeah, some point that's, doing, doing some yeah. writing again yeah that's really good to hear you say that actually because I do feel like the same like for three months I'm Matt Abbott who runs Nims and Fogs and for three months I'm Matt Abbott poet and whatever but I, what I find really interesting like you say is that so many nights and presses and whatever they're all run by poets and for me that sense of community the fact that it's almost run by poets and it, as well it's just I think that's part of it for me because yeah. it's just such a wonderful, vibrant, supportive community. But poets, by nature, would want to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And you know, we make our own work, we make our own industry, and uh, I think that, that absolutely, that's that's the the power of it and the kind of DIY kind of ethic of it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you fancy reading as a, a poem? Let's do it, Matthew. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'd start with something uh, gruesome. Uh, cool. Th yeah, this was written in uh, the summer. Um, this is sort of, this is my other life as a parent, um, which has just as many, if not more, demands on my time and energy and emotional resilience as uh, as all the other stuff. Uh, and so this is a, this is a moment. Um, I don't know what it's called, but you'll you'll figure it out. Um, the tooth made for the emergency exit stuck out its head leaning overboard I'm reading scribble from a notebook so excuse me if it's like I'm <laughs> stumbling the whole smile now grotesque a protruding brick in an enamel wall I offered to finish the job but autonomy and anxiety are compelling states Oops, for a nine year old so she skated from mirror to mirror for an hour or more, tissue blooded, yelping at her own approaches, weeping and laughing. I waited, patient as a monk, knowing my chance would come. And it did in the bathroom prior to bed. She asked, I examined, phone torch, glasses on forehead, 40 something eyes in their flailing focus. She placed a hand on my shoulder. Tap it, if you want me to stop, I said. She nodded, I could see it hurt. Tissue in hand, thumb and forefinger, pincers, I grip softly, finding purchase, sensing, gauging the strength of tug. I counted, one, I tighten grip, two, she thinks it will come out on three, but I tug and it pops and she recoils. It hurts, but it's in my hand, a bloody nugget. I hug her close, her tears make way for a bloody smile as she steps back and marvels at that which was her, now there in her hand, the next offering to the fairy world. Yeah. Beautiful. Love that. Yeah. A beautiful moment. <laughs> the job to find that. yourself doing. <laughs> yeah. I do, yeah. I like pulling teeth out. It's a bit weird. <laughs> There's a strange satisfaction of the moment when it pops like that. Um, yeah. Not my well, own. I've never had the pleasure, but I'm probably a lot closer to doing that than I was doing my own back in the day. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Cool. <laughs> that was a beautiful poem. Is that so? Is that fairly new, Ben? If you, oh, uh, is that in? Yeah, that's one of my scribbles just over the last few months. You know, just I've been keeping a journal actually, um, which uh, I started it at the beginning of lockdown, and I, I used to do that all the time um, before I had such a sort of all over the place lifestyle, um, which it has been for a while now. So I just thought, oh, I'm going to be here every day. I'm just going to write a little bit every morning or whenever I can. And also just to sort of process the madness of like that initial few months was crazy, wasn't it? When everyone was just like, I uh, don't know how to deal with this. Um, but yeah, it's been quite nice actually, because it's meant, you know, little poems popped out here and there. Um, and, and quite sort of small little, just noticing family incidental um, little moments, which... Sometimes, you know, I think that the album's been really big stuff. We've been writing about issues and, um, you know, it's quite heavy. And so it's been quite nice just to delve into just, yeah, that, those, those yeah. smaller moments. Yeah. Yeah. In a, in a very weird way, they, they did produce some quite nice scenarios and quite nice moments, didn't it? I mean, it was almost like a hypothetical scenario. Right, so for six months, you can't leave your house. You can't do this. Like, it's bizarre, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, I just hope there's not like a, a kind of, you know, a rut, like a, a, a glut of collections all about lockdown and COVID that are going to come Mate, out next year. Edinburgh Fringe next year is going to be an absolute <laughs> giant. It's going to be a horror <laughs> show. I'm not going. It's all going to be the same show. No. It'll be like the kind of, you know, 5,000 5, Truman shows. Corona the musical. Corona, no, I'm not yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Corona the improv. Um, Corona the, yeah. Yeah. No, beautiful. Um, I've got couple of questions to ask you but uh do you fancy uh, i'm conscious that i'll just chat and chat and chat so do you fancy sharing us another poem and then i'll ask you a question yeah, yeah i don't sure. want to take too much time let's uh watch let's do um let's, i'll do something for the, that's on the album because that's quite cool. nice, to, nice to talk about that um nice uh so this is a track that uh it's a track i'm gonna do a poem i'm thinking of it in track <laughs> terms but it's a poem yeah um i kind of wrote it <sighs> Uh, I suppose in reflecting reflecting on the uh, what was going on a lot of the time, you know, there was like the refugee crisis was massive in the news. Um, Brexit was ramping up. I mean, it was it was already happening, but like all the rhetoric was ramping up, and just uh, I, su I suppose I was reflecting on uh, notions of otherness and uh, the weaponizing of that. And so I wrote this piece called Boxes. It goes. Um, Tick box, long form, whitewash, wrong norm, categorical, razor wire historical, mythological talk for do you belong, toad's foot and raven wing, degenerate spirits whispering, curses coming languages I can't understand, shapeshifters, black eyed bearded drifters, tongue clickers, window lickers, shirt lifters, oath sworn to another god, or no god, or half god, or half goat, half here, half remote, tick fence climber, tick young gun, tick stowaway, tick gold digger, dead ringer for trouble, dead ringer for trouble. Empire, built by other. Empire, strikes black. Empire, votes leave. Empire, flat on back. Open up, open up, shut down. Empire, send boats or empire, let drown. Other on the boat, other, watch them float. Other on the beach, other out of reach. Little brother, face down. Open up, open up, little sister sleeping rough. Not by the hairs of my chinny chin chin, no. Don't let them in, don't let them in, don't let them in. Little sister and her cousin missing now. Tick, missing now. Tick, box, another box, box, other. Tick, box, another box, box, other. Tick, box, another box. I just want to break that box. I want to beat that box in. I want to smash that box up, put the box in the bin, because I just want to tick peace. I want to tick wonder. I want to tick mosque or tinder, tick fluid gender, broken tick box, mender, rule bender, render void. I want to tick love, tick green, green, tick gay, tick any other way than straight, white, rich, male line, tick him, her, they, tick non-binary, tick brown, black, white, defining me, you, we, who, shades, hues, Keys, clues, body ladders, tooth of a Kenyan uncle, eyes of a Nordic witch, love for God, or beards, or queers, patchwork, each of us, one stitch, other, other, everywhere, and not a stop to think, because all we are is all of us. 
And all we are is everything, just all of us, just all of it in the palms of our plans. Sometimes a square peg does fit in a round of applause. All we are is everyone, and all we are is everything, and all of us, and all of it, and all of us, and all of it, and all we are is everyone, and all we are is everything, and all of us, and all of it, and all of us, and all of it, and all we are is everything, and all we are is everyone, and all of this, and all of us, and all of it, and all of us, and all of it, and all of us, and all of it. Yeah. Beautiful. Very he... powerful. Thank you. Man, you got some... Just... Uh... Huh? Sorry, go on. It's just the bigger picture stuff, isn't it? It's like, it's just, I, I, I can't bear this sort of divisive rhetoric that has just been slapping us around the head for the last few years. It's just so exhausting. And, like, the lack of love and compassion and this whole bloody school dinners business, uh, you know, over the last week has just highlighted it once again uh just they're, they're like bloody cold-blooded reptiles man uh I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying that in a david Icke kind of way i'm just going you know geez man who are these people who are these I know. people yeah yeah it's it's pretty grim it's well no it's incredibly grim i can't believe yeah someone's outdone thatcher but yeah it's happening <laughs> yeah and then, but all the more reason for an album like the tongue through album to come out and what really interests me, something that I touched on in the Roaring Twenties radio interview, was that Tung Fu was, it exists live on stage. It's a live interpretation, collaboration. Mm. It's performed around the world. Um, and now it's 100% the opposite. It's, it's not, it's digital and it's been crafted. So it's sort of the opposite, but it's still mm. quintessentially Tung Fu, yeah. which I think is fascinating. Um, and yeah. I just, uh, yeah. Go on. I'm just touching on that. Really. Yeah, Sorry, go on. It's just it's um it's been a really interesting project because I think it's it was really important for us to try and uh keep the kind of heart of what Tung Fu is, which is about a collaboration and risk taking and uh improvisation. Uh but you obviously want that to be uh, something that you can listen to over and over again and, 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 and follow. And so there are different art forms, you know, the art of improvising a show is a different thing to a, to a listening art, you know, an album or, you know, a theatre piece or whatever. So you sort of slightly have to change the parameters depending on what the, what the product is that you want to create. But um, I think we're clear enough in what our intentions are and what the aesthetic is that hopefully it can translate into you know, something, it's not a million miles away from what we do, but it's just, yeah, in, in, in some ways, it's like, we can just put the bells on it, you know. It's like, we can hang the hang the sort of jingly jangle bits on it, that, you, you know, in a, in, a, in a live show, you've got three musicians and that's it, that's what you've got in the room, but on an album, it's like, oh, should we have some backing vocals? Mm, I think yeah. this needs some cello, mm, uh, you know, and so that's been so cool to be able to just, you know, bring in those those bits and create a broader palette. Yeah. yeah, I think it's incredibly exciting. Like, Tung Fu is one of the most innovative and vibrant and exciting poetry projects that there is. It's been going for, like, what, 13 years, did you say? 13 years, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 13 years. So now for it to be presented in album form, I just think it's fantastic. And Thanks, the man. fact that it's happening now is so exciting and so needed, you know? Yeah, I feel that. I really feel that. It's... um. Yeah, also just because we can't do gigs, it's been so nice just to have a have a, a Tung Fu project that we can just sort of get, really, really dig into and uh, get something back from and create something to offer as well because I really bloody miss the gigs, man. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I know, same. But, you know, in 50 years' time when someone's like, I wonder what poetry was like during the lockdown, the Tung Fu, the Tung Fu album yeah. will be like, Listen to this there album. you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, you know. I think it's pretty cool. Well, uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, have you got any other poems which you'd like got, to share? I've got a few bits and pieces, yeah. I've got a few bits and pieces man. for you, mate. It does, doesn't it? Really it really yeah. does. Um, yeah. I'll do... Okay, so this is a shorter one. Um, this is a piece that I wrote. I was doing some workshops with um, a youth counselling service and uh, th these were sort of music and writing workshops and... Uh, so it was me and a counsellor and, and a young person who would come in. Uh, uh, so there, there was obviously quite a lot going on for them. Um, and this girl talked about her depression and 
uh, we did some writing and we made a song and it turned out she could just sing it was just stunning and uh just filled up just filled me up filled me up and i came home and i wrote this it's called um the sea and the girl in the workshop why do you sing when you are sinking is it because the room holds your voice like the sea holds a wreck it's dark at the bottom eh? You can barely make out the splintered furniture, salting itself in the cold sand. What is it about this glass pool in your voice that invites remedy? Is it the silver thread that illuminates the water with nothing but a blown bow? Because for me, when you do that, everything behind my ribs becomes liquid. God, I only know love again. This grief in your smile is the world's song. I'm just sorry it's found you at 14, but singing is probably the best you can do. I'm happy to stay down here with you if that's where you are swimming. I know the chords for this depth, the pressure on the eyes, breath between each note. There isn't a pill for this, but I saw your dad aching with you as he dropped you off. It's not easy being a shepherd for an octopus. He just wants to know you'll swim back to him. Perhaps you can sing him the sea's colour. He can't hold water, but he might learn something of its movement. Yeah. Beautiful, really beautiful. That I love doing that stuff, man. It's um, I've done yeah. another project like that over the, over lockdown, um, with with the counselling service, and um, it's really humbling. And you really, without wanting to sound like oh, art is the uh, you know, medicine for the heart, I, I kind of is. And um, I sort of, I, I I just there's such a value that I get. This is so different from. You know, we all write from a place of heart, I hope. Um, yeah, but when you're working and collaborating with other people um, and they're open and trusting enough to share something of themselves and, and that that's really inspiring and um, really humbling um, and it kind of connects you to other humans and connects all of us to the, that vulnerability that we carry around in us and I think you know when you're sort of jumping on off stage and you're kind of running around and you're teaching you can build up a, like a little bit of an armor and I think it's so healthy to go into those spaces where you have to kind of tread really sensitively and kind of sit with uh, yours and other people's discomfort and find a way of creating something out of that that's, that's just um that's the best for me yeah 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 um with the poetry takeaway like mm. i know you write for takeaway and i do as well and uh you can be chatting to a complete stranger and they'll be really really open and intimate with you almost mm. instantly because you're putting it in a poem and mm. i just find that fascinating um, it's really fascinating isn't it people want yeah. to step into that yeah because it, and... it just gives them license in it it's not like you know some of my best mates wouldn't be that open with me straight away it's difficult to bring it up in conversation as soon as it's poetry it's like oh, okay you say yeah. the things that yeah it's mad isn't it yeah i did one with um, them last weekend and uh this lovely couple came up and wanted me to write a poem about about them so i spoke to each of them individually got them to tell me about the other one and how they met and they were clearly so into each other and it was really it was sort of really touching because they were you know, a bit of an older couple and um, they'd obviously met, you know, quite recently in the last year or so. And yeah, it's just a real privilege to then offer something back, a reflection, and you they see themselves in the words and see each other. And like, they might have said things to me that in a way that, you know, they, yeah. I don't know, it's just fascinating. And then this whole thing yeah. of like the reserve, the British reserve, it's like, hmm, actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I think people yeah. seem pretty willing to kind of come up and go, here's me. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Poetry yeah. gives them a license to. So yeah, shout out to the poetry takeaway. Absolutely. Um, We're doing great stuff. Yeah. So it's about five to, I reckon you've got time for one, maybe two, depends on how long they are. Yeah. But you know, Bake Off's on at eight. I know that everyone <laughs> loves Bake Off. So. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do, um, Mm, I'll do. Oh man, I've forgotten the first line. Maybe I shouldn't do that one. <laughs> did you not? You, I I nearly did that as well with the one I started with. It's, it's that on stage sharpness, oh, mate. It's gone. It's gone. Uh, no. I, yeah, yeah. Okay. So look, I'll do one that I usually do with um with a piano, and uh, this is about uh, 
this is about that uh, maybe thinking about the the language that we use and how that sort of determines our experience of the world so whether that's self-talk or whether that's speaking to other people and uh, i imagined that uh if i if you were to come around to me matt to to oh hang on my phone's doing something weird come on come back it's not responding oh there you go um if uh if you were to come around and stay in my brain for the night like if, if there was like an airbnb of the mind and um and, I, and like if it was just a regular airbnb i'd say like you know this is this is uh, these are the towels and that's the kettle and whereas if you were coming around to stay in my head this is what i would say uh and i'm gonna sing a bit because i usually do and why not um uh, yeah yeah sorry if it's really loud everyone no, no. um so come on come in let me show you around my heart is quiet my fears are all drowned and if you sing me your troubles i'll be your clown come on Come in, let me show you around. Come in, let me show you around. Wipe your feet anywhere. Thoughts become sparks more easily if there's some mud on your soles to earth them. We painted clouds on the ceiling and bones and spanners. Oh, and this is a sculpture I made out of watch springs and fluff from my belly button. That corner over there, all burnt black and bloodstained, that's where I breathe questions. Launched them like mini rockets, watched them ricochet off the bookshelves. Several times I've set fire to the curtains. This table is a mess, sorry, it's covered in metaphors. Some of them are a bit tired in need of recycling, but some of them are fresh, you know, giving old forms new life. This piano, for example, is a dead whale. Its songs are almost forgotten, but you can still strum its bones and hear the ocean in the air that escapes when you press down the pedals. There's a lot of music in here. Notice the beats shrink wrapped, piled up on that clock face. Melodies are stored in jam jars. Chords are stacked like Lego bricks, harmonics hung on that string above the fireplace. Here, smell this rug. <laughs> Tequila and special brew, right? It's spray, I spray it every Sunday and smudge it with fag ash. It reminds me of my youth. Those thoughts are always reckless, always joyful, always confused. That driftwood bench under the window, that's for love thoughts. You can lie on it and speed through rapids or drift on still lakes, lilies scattered everywhere like promises. And if you listen, there are crickets and heartbeats and children and whispers and secrets and kisses and kisses and heartbeats and the ones that you love and the ones that you miss, the ones you hold close to you each day because it's bliss and the ones that you long for and the ones that you sing songs for and the ones that got away and the ones that got away. And if you drift out far enough, you might just hear the groaning creak of wrecks washed by tides. Skulls of dead friends with yellow roses in their ghoulish eyes. Oh, and this. You need to be careful with this. It looks like a telescope, but if you peer through it long enough, you'll find fear staring back at you, illuminated by the awareness that none of this means anything. And depending on which eye you look through, that awareness is either a warm blanket or a tin cup for your tears. Come in, come in, let me show you around. My heart is quiet, my fears are all drowned, and if you sing me your troubles, I'll be your clown. Come on, come in, let me show you around. Hey, <laughs> oh, it's nice to do that. I've done that for a nice. long time. Yeah, <sighs> that was uh, beautiful. I'm really lucky. Like you sung and Gabriel Acamo sang um, last week as well, so I'm dead lucky. I get some great performances on here, man. I, I love doing this. It's great. Um, it's nice. It's very Thank you. <laughs> it's very yeah, intimate. I know it is, but I try and make it as relaxed as possible. And uh, it's it's been a lifeline for me. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, so the album's out 27th of November. The new single's out now. The new single, Scattershock, is out now. And there's a lovely video done by Limbic Cinema, who are some Bristol film genius people. And there's another yep. uh, track that was out last month called Boat Building with another equally lovely video by David Krista. Um and yeah, the album's got Vanessa Kasule on it, it's got Zia Ahmed, it's got uh, Rafif Zierda, it's got Joshua Idehan, Anthony Yannick Zagoro, it's got Amira Leon, Disraeli, KOG, Kweku uh, Saki, and uh, it's a right old beast. Uh, it's called Boat Building, and we'll be selling Amazing. it on uh, all of the usual places, vinyl and what, band camp. Where do Band yeah, is bank the main, main place to come and find us and, uh, and, and yeah, and then obviously... Tongfu.co.uk is it? Tongfu.co.uk is where all that stuff is yeah. and then Tongfu Show on 
yeah, all that on the socials. Yeah, man. Well, thank you, Chris. I can't wait, and I'm sure everybody who's watching can't wait either. So thanks for giving up your time. Thank can't you wait to so hear the much. album. Thanks so much for having me, man. Stay alert. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, stay alert. Mm. All right, mate. I'll speak <laughs> you soon. Take care. Bye. So that was uh, Chris Redmond from Tung Fu. Make sure you check out the new album, Boat Building, is out on the 27th of November. Uh, next week is Elise Hadgraft, who has a new collection out on the Poetry Press this Thursday. So make sure you tune in for that, 7.30 to 8pm UK time. My name is Matt Abbott. We are Nims and Fugs. Thank you for tuning in. Some lovely comments and digital love hearts and all that. I'll see you all soon. Cheers.